Hello and welcome back to the channel for another College TF review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Studio Series Transformers Rise of the Beast Scourge Leader class. And this guy is awesome. I'm definitely really excited to take a look at him today. You can get yours over at All Time Toy Store. Check out the links in the description below. And as always, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It keeps these fantastic reviews coming. So before we get into this mighty beast, let's take a look at the display background that comes in the packaging here. This is the scene from the trailer that we have been pretty well acquainted now, where it looks like Bumblebee meets his demise, or at least gets brutally stabbed one way or another. So that is the display background. Definitely nice and big because Scourge is huge. Here's the box. Very large box. Studio Series 101. Very menacing looking character. I think this is one of the baddest looking Transformers, live action Transformers we've seen in quite a while. If not ever, this guy looks incredible. Very, very awesome. Certainly a bit of a contrast, I'd say, you know, from a G1 styling Scourge. When we're squared off, this guy it just looks straight up evil. Very awesome. So that is the box. Rise of Beasts. Words. The instructions for this guy, as always, you know, it's hard to make instructions that are super easy to follow. Um, this is actually, you know, he's not actually that complex. The instructions are a little, make him a little more complex than he actually is, but um, it's easy to follow, and his overall transformation is actually quite fun. And pretty simplistic, I would actually say, in a good way. In a very good way. You're still getting, I would say, plenty for your money with this guy. Um, but, yeah, look at that. That just looks insane. I mean, a claw and a sword on his arms. Bring him in for a look at that. Really crazy looking head sculpt. Kind of gives me like a evil Sith vibes, the way he's got this big neck piece and everything. Very knight inspired. He does have nice light piping back there. So if you get some light in there, it does look really cool. Lights up his eyes very nicely. See this nice chest detailing. And there are insignias of all his unfortunate victims in his grill in there. Very cool. Lots of cool weathering on him. Definitely kind of a apocalyptic um, style to this guy. Very nice leg detailing. I do like the way the legs transform. It's very simplistic, but it looks pretty cool and adds in some extra layers in there. Looks really cool. And of course you do to get this big claw and you can see we have these rusted chains throughout his robot mode. And if you remember back to the Bumblebee movie at the end, you know, the way Bumblebee defeats one of those cons is by wrapping a chain through him. And then when he transforms from uh, that helicopter mode back to vehicle mode, he can just, or from helicopter mode to robot mode, Bumblebee can just rip him apart. But as you can see, Scourge is already embedded with chains, as are, I think, a lot of the Maximals. So I don't think that move will be as common of a mass destruction trick in this movie. Might work on Decepticons, but not Terracons and probably not Maximals either. You can see the back. It does have a little bit of a backpack, but it, I think it matches the character design pretty well. It does give him that quad smokestack look, which I think is really awesome. So for articulation, this guy is really decked out. Uh, very good. Exactly, I think, what you should expect nowadays from a leader class. So he actually has two joints of the head. So you have an upper ball joint, looks side to side, can look up to a great degree and down. And then you also have this joint at the neck, which can look down and rotate all around, so that's pretty cool. Uh, not really anything side to side, but I think this piece this piece is also a uh, flexible, more flexible plastic. Looks pretty cool. Kind of looks like a chain mail armor there. And then the shoulder pads do hinge a little bit, largely due to transformation purposes. Then you do get very nice articulation there. You can get it all the way up. Um, that's part of our for our transformation, but works pretty well. So you can get his arms all the way up. And then you do get, of course, rotation at the shoulder as well. Um, can, yeah, you can get it going all the way around. It does kind of hit those smokestacks, but it works. Then you do get a uh, bicep just above the elbow, actually. Articulation there. You get 90 out of the elbow. Then you do also get hand articulation on this guy. He has opening and closing hands on this side. Doesn't have a hand on the other side, so. And then that sword can articulate however you want, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can have it back like that if you want, or collapse up this side, whatever, um, for transformation. Then on this hand, you do get uh, this claw and can articulate at all the bases of the fingers. So that is pretty cool. And you can splay them all the way out. I feel like he, he it kind of looks like he has a gun here, but he also does come with um, a gun accessory, which we'll get into in a minute. 
Then he does have completely unhindered waist articulation, which is very nice. Then he can kick up uh, very, very far. That's pretty darn flexible for such a big dude. Then he can also kick back pretty far, with a backpack even. And he has very nice knee articulation on kind of a soft ratchet. And then he does have, of course, foot articulation. So you go, that's kind of a locked position, but then you can get going forward pretty far. And then very nice ankle tilt as well. So this guy, very easy to pose, very sturdy, and man, does he look evil. So in terms of that one accessory he does come with, that is his gun. So to integrate that, you do just pop off the claw, and then both the claw and the gun are keyed. So you can see there's a slot on this side, and there is like a little raised tab here on the arm, and it does just slot in very nicely. You can have Scourge also blasting away any Autobots or Maximals. So that is certainly a pretty nice accessory. And then if you want to store his claw, just fold up all those kind of squiddish hands. And you do get a tab here or a slot here um, on the inside of the arm. And then there is a tab there. Uh, the claw does just tab in to the back like that. So you can store his claw if you want to. Or alternatively, if you don't want him to have the gun out, um, you can store the gun. You have a slot on his butt and tab there. And it does just tab in to place. You also could use the tab on the other side. It doesn't actually matter. So that is pretty cool. Let's get his claw back arm. So here you can see how it is also keyed on the arm. Nice and sturdy connection as well. So there is the gun storage. Very nice. All right, let's get into some size comparisons here. This guy is a leader. Let's see if he stands up to that size. Certainly a bit pricey, so I would say he does. I mean, this is a Voyager battle trap. And yeah, he completely dwarfs him. He is gigantic. I don't have an Optimus with me right now, but he is huge. This guy is huge. Definitely qualifies for that leader price point. Here we get B, <laughs> half the height, and Air Razor as well. These Maximals are definitely looking pretty tall, as you know, Air Razor is a deluxe, but she's, you know, almost not that close in height, but almost the same size as uh, Battle Trap there. So you can see, you know, Voyager Maximal, we can expect to be like a little taller than um, probably Battle Trap. Hopefully, I'll get Cheetor soon and we can uh, check that out. And yeah, that's those uh, robot mode size comparisons. And we definitely see, you know, in that trailer, we definitely hit it's that scene here. I think Battle Trap's kind of standing here. Now we do get Scourge, and he does slice straight through Bumblebee, which is too bad for poor, poor B. But here you can see just for size, that definitely works out pretty well. So you can have that display going if that is your mojo. I personally don't want B to die, so, you know, I'm not going to be doing that, but it's pretty, pretty awesome. And this guy's joints are all very sturdy. Um, he feels also, I would say, like a leader. He is very heavy. Um, in terms of weight compared to Battle Trap, he feels at least twice as heavy as Battle Trap, so very nice there. Yeah, and the, the detailing and painting on this guy is very good. I do like the weathering. It actually did turn out pretty well. It's not like some of the um, unfortunate Takara Tommy repaints that we've got in the past. This guy actually looks very good. Very, very good. So now for transformation. Um, this guy is not too bad at all. So to begin with, I like to start with the sword. Just collapse it down like that. Make sure your the biceps or the, el the elbow joint is all straightened out here on both sides that. Now we come to the back here. Also, you want to, this will be used in truck mode, so keep that off the side. And then detach here, this backpack piece. Now I will say, um, my only really complaints with this guy are really minor. Um, the, you know, there's no way for the smokestacks to lock in, so they do just kind of rattle around. And then this tab and slot, you know, it's not very, not that secure. It's secure enough that it doesn't wobble off, but you know, it doesn't actually really tap in um, all that well. So then you just want to pull this down and go ahead and stretch out this section, just so you have enough space to work on everything else. And you go ahead and open up this section, just fold it out from inside like that, straighten it out. And here you can see that is the front of the truck there. And then we can go ahead and fold out the sides here as well. And just leave all of this kind of folded up like that for now. So you can work on the rest of the truck. So let's go down to the legs next. So to begin with the legs, you like to come to the feet and they do just open up like that the toes out and you get a slot here on the toe it goes into a tab there on the side of the leg and just 
line everything up. You do want to hear that toe click, right? So same thing on this side, you can start with that, click, then pull the toe out, snap in, like so, then rotate the legs around. And you don't want to tab them in yet, you do see you get um, circular port here, and that goes for um, the circle tabs, but don't tab anything in super securely yet, just kind of leave it sitting there for now. And also on this foot, you do want to come and pull out the circular tab here, which is actually very easy to pull out, which is good, you don't need any kind of tool for that, at least on my copy. And then you do get that port there, which is where that tab will eventually line up. So just kind of keep everything there for now. Now we can come to the top of the truck, and you want to start with his right arm. So to begin, you want to shift everything up so that little, this piece is facing all the way forward, like so. Straighten out that arm, pull it back, and then you want to disengage from the chest. So just, there's a little tab there that was tabbed into a slot on the chest. You just want to rotate this whole piece upwards, like so. And then next, you do need to come to the inside of the sword here, and it does disconnect. So just pull all of this out. You could have done this earlier too, but go ahead and pull out the whole sword assembly. So now it's much longer than it was previously, and this will enable it to slot into the leg. So if you see on this leg, we do get a slot here, and the sword does have a tab here as well. So just kind of bring all that down and begin aligning all that up. And just tab, make sure the knees are straight. That does also matter. Tab that in. And now you can go ahead and combine the legs. So line up those slots, circular slots, and the feet as well. Make sure everything looks nice and tabbed in so you have something like that. Next, come to the other arm, repeat the same thing, but this one doesn't tab into the leg in any way. So again, just wanna pull it up like so, pull the arm down, then disengage from the chest, flip up like that. Make sure everything lines up pretty smoothly. You should, these two parts should just barely not touch each other, but they should line up with all the tabs there. You can see there's two tabs and kind of two slots that are formed there. Those are important and will be needed later. And then just make sure that arm's straight and kind of, you should have something like this. Next, you want to come to the chest. And so the chest is an asymmetric design. So here you can see you have like a set of hinges here. Well, on this side, you don't. So to start, you want to flare these front bumper pieces out, then disengage this section and pull it all the way up until it's straight. And now just pull the chest towards uh, Scourge's left side. <laughs> and just pull that out like so. So you're left with something like that. Now we can go ahead and collapse um, the whole top of the truck. So this part, this section needs to collapse inwards. This is a very stiff tab. I'm not a big fan of how stiff it is on the transparent plastic, but it all works out fine. And you just want to overlap it. And this part's pretty straightforward. You're trying to make the front of the truck. So this just rests in there. And then you get some transparent slots that go onto the tabs on the truck hood. So just line all those up. Like so. Matter of just making sure everything's slotted in nicely. And you know, the whole cab should be compressed like that. This piece does kind of look kind of funny in there, but it does compress like so. And now we can come to these wheels and you want to disengage them from the chest, like so. I'll rotate this piece around. So it's facing what will be the front of the truck. And then you do get tab here, goes into slot on the side. And the same thing is true for the other wheel. Just go ahead and slot that in. Make sure you know everything on top stays tabbed together. Take the other wheel, do the same thing. Tap that in to that side. And then we can take the grill. And there are some tabs and slots in there, but it does all kind of line up largely by itself. A matter of slotting it in like so very nice and secure in there and now we have the front of the truck so just for the final touches we got a slot here on the inside of the door that goes into a tab here and then these two brace pieces need to overlap with the hinge on the arm or claw so let's go ahead line that all up make sure to pull the smokestacks up you have the clearance there we go and then just articulate that claw until you get all that lined up like that. You can see it's overlapping the claw ever so slightly. Same thing on this side, articulate up those smokestacks, slide out of the way, line in the proper position. And then this side, you just have tab that goes in there. And then on both sides, you do have um, a slot on the base that goes into a, or a tab 
on the base underneath these smokestacks that goes into a slot on the leg. You can see it lined up on both sides. Straighten out those smokestacks. And here is Scourge almost complete in his truck mode, but Peterbilt 375. The other step that I did forget, um, this, this one's easy to forget, but it is a minor little touch, is you do want to pull out these wheels. Um, my, my suggestion is just kind of push on the rim while pulling at the tire as they do extend out a little bit. This was an interesting feature. I actually didn't think they needed to include this in Transformation, but it is cool that they did, certainly, as it seems to be, you know, does give him that alternate tire look in his robot mode. It doesn't just make it look like his legs just fold back and form the bed of the truck. There's a little bit more to it than that. So let's go ahead, push them out till they, you know, largely line up with those other wheels. That's all you're looking for. It does take a little bit more effort than I'd like, but you know, you don't want it just flopping around all the time. But it's certainly something that I didn't think they had to include in his transformation. But it is nonetheless cool that they did. And so here, I'm not a big fan of the truck bed. The other thing you can do here is with the hand, um, I do like to fold it up. So it's just kind of tucked up because he does just have hand sitting out and claw sitting out, or you could leave it all the way back. It doesn't actually matter. Um, certainly up to you. But there you have the main bed of the truck. And if you saw in robot mode, these do look like fifth wheels, that, that like the, the fifth wheel of the truck that was split in half. And those unfortunately do not combine and he does not actually have any fifth wheel. I would have liked to see fifth wheel detailing. They could have just put it on the side of the foot there. I think that would have looked a little better, but certainly really bad looking lengthened Peterbilt 375 and certainly heavily armored and all that looks really, really menacing. Very cool. So then for his weapon, what you want to do is it does split open. So just open it up. You can see there are ball joints inside. And so just want to come on, open up. There we go. Open it up like that. Then rotate at that cannon piece. And then you want to rotate these parts around. So you have these open slots are facing down. So the same thing on the other side, same thing with the waffling, you want all that facing down. You do get two tabs here on the legs, one on each side. And these do just slot in over top of all of that. Like that. And we do see this um, in the actual truck used on set. It does have those pieces there. I'm not actually sure what they are because to me, they look like cement mixer piping. Um, they used to you know extend that the boom length on the cement mixer so it can pour cement but you know he's a tractor trailer i'm pretty sure you could i guess he could be parts of an old cement mixer hard to tell but very cool very very cool looking robot or truck mode here very menacing similar to um, that dark of the moon megatron certainly but i actually think this guy's design is better looks very evil and then again that some of that waffling on the side of the leg here gets exposed. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, but it doesn't look horrible given how, you know, mashed together his truck mode already is. And it would have been nice if they had some sort of detailing there, uh, maybe inside the foot, that was a little recess, so that way it doesn't get scratched. Um, but then you could still have tail lights. That would have been nice. But I mean, this guy's fantastic. You're definitely getting, I would say your money's worth with this guy. Very cool. Very nice paint apps. You got the, all the orange um, marker lights and turn signals and all that. The transparent orange certainly um, makes it look like he has a fire going inside. And there's his head on the bottom. It does just kind of sit there. There isn't really much in the ways of storing um, the head. So, you know, just leave it however. But the other nice thing is they are pinned on wheels. So they do roll, he rolls beautifully. You know, just line everything up <laughs> properly. And then of course should roll no problem across the ground. So now we'll get into some size comparisons here. I'll readjust the camera so you can see a little better. Here are uh, Scourge and Battletrap in their vehicle modes. And just when we thought Battletrap had a pretty epic looking vehicle mode, now we have Scourge, who is a whole lot bigger than this guy. Certainly give, you know, Battletrap, if there's infighting among the Terracons, which certainly seems plausible, he would uh, have no problems putting Battletrap in his place. See, massive difference. Even just the size of the wheels is, you know, kind of insane. Um, but I think pretty accurate, actually, in scale. I don't think this is that far off at all. I don't think Scourge is too big or Battle Trap too small. I think they actually fit in pretty well with one another. I do like the diversity here um, and the looks of these Terracons. You know, Battle Trap still has some pretty vibrant colors, whereas uh, Scourge is uh, just all dark and brooding all around. I do like the prominent use of 
these brush guards across, you know, both Autobots and Maximals and Terracon, or Autobots and Terracons all like, um, very apocalyptic style setting. And now to bring in, uh, here's Bumblebee, nice piece of Bumblebee for that size. And I think that actually works out near perfect um, for how you would think a big rig and a souped up Camaro set up size together. Very nice. And here's Air Razor, of course, as well. Giant bird. <laughs> no real way to judge that scale. She's just a giant bird. So there is that. And I think this movie is shaping up to be pretty awesome. I know there's some leaks today of uh, Studio Series Optimus Prime for Rise of the Beasts, and that guy is looking fantastic. I can't wait to see some shots of his robot or of his vehicle mode. Uh, hopefully that stocks up as well as it did with the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. So that figure is fantastic, and I love that Optimus Prime. One of probably my, currently my favorite um, live action version of Optimus. That I think this new Rise of the Beasts ones might beat it out. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more Rise of the Beasts figures as there are more coming out and I already have more um, in hand right now. So definitely get some more reviews out to you soon. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next review. See you then.